Hello and welcome to Let's Talk, the only Auckland TV show about books, arts, ideas and events. Let's dive into California Design, the Auckland Art Gallery's current show. Senior curator Ron Branson's here to talk about the furniture, fashion and style that came out of California from the mid-1930s to the mid-60s. Those golden years when oil drilling and movie making pushed the state from nowheresville to glamour centre in just a few scintillating decades. Hello Ron, welcome on in. It's great to have you here from the gallery where it must be really busy at the moment. It is. Now I've been to see um, the wonderful exhibition and I noticed one of the first things I looked at as I come in the door is this beautiful little elephant. Oh, Tell me about the it's plywood. It's an elephant, elephant made out of plywood, Lindsay, yeah. that is also a stool for your favourite child or grandchild. Mm -hmm. um, made in 1945 in California by Charles and Ray Eames. They were partners in life and partners in work and have subsequently been recognized as two of the greatest American designers of the 20th century. But that little elephant is both a toy and a treasure. Yeah. And of course, they're the designers of the, the famous Eames chair, which is still being produced and sat upon That's and right. admired. Isn't it? We've put yeah. one care of Matisse uh, in the foyer of the show. So for people who've never sat in that wonderful Eames lounger and ottoman, you can sit in it. And I say to them when I see people from the, just members of the public coming up, I say, don't just take 60 seconds to sit on that Eames chair. Take, take five minutes, then you won't want to get out of it. Yes. One of the things that struck me about this exhibition is, I mean, A, that most of it looks so contemporarily yeah. modern. Yeah. You know, and I got the feeling that we haven't actually moved on much in design since then. We haven't got much better since then. Well, I think one of the things about modernist design that it comes out of California is that it values comfort mm. and it values indoor-outdoor lifestyle and it values families. And that's what we value. Mm. So there are lessons from that period that we're still finding enrich our lives today. Because it was the start, wasn't it, of the, the burgeoning of suburbia. It was, oh. it was when cars and petrol were really, really cheap. And all of a sudden, they could start spreading the desert with these endless suburbs that you could get to easily well, in your automobile. The, well, yes. it's the, yeah. somewhat like the eternal sunshine of um, California. You know, I mean, the Depression delivered a huge number of popular increase in population in California, as did the Second World War in terms of war industry. And so California grew, grew faster as a state in America than anyone else. And also its industry supported um, research in terms of all aspects of design. Mm. So it was a sort of win-win state. Yeah. Let's go back to this business of home and family. I mean, there's a, a house that looks like something you could put in Titarangi today and it's got open plan living and what we now still call um, indoor outdoor, outdoor flow etc. That's right it's, yeah. it's a, a steel frame construction with um, you know slatted board it's the Merman house um, slatted board floor and it's like having a lounge on the inside that's actually open to the outside mm. and I have a friend who actually has a, a house that I think has been influenced by that Merman house. Gosh. Because the design of California actually was being felt here in New Zealand, and mm. particularly in the o Auckland re region, as early as the 1950s, yes. where magazines like Home and Building were saying, have we developed a Pacific architecture here influenced by California? Mm. And of course, the colours. So there's the 1950s, the colours just hit you in the eye when you walk into the gallery too. Those sort of singing coral pinks yeah. and the turquoises and the lime greens and the brilliant citrus orange and yellow. Exactly. We based yeah. the branding, the visual branding for California Design at Auckland Art Gallery on a Saul Bass cover for a Frank Sinatra album. And unlike the, what we might have a predisposition to think that 50s, for instance, 50s design is pastels, it's not. Mm. It's intense colours, yeah. pure colours, bright colours. And as a gal, I really love the fashions in this oh, show yeah. too. I mean, to the, die for. The image that we see is of a fabulous uh, red, white and blue swimsuit and all of your mm -hmm. advertising, which is very sort of Esther Williams, isn't it? I think but, yeah. the wonderful thing about the way in which costume is dis uh, displayed in the show, even the Levi jeans, for instance, or the Levi jeans sportswear for women at the beach, is that the, the frames that support them are perfect in the sense of they, they give you the sense of a living body being in the clothing and also being a period body from the 50s. Yes. They're very clever. clever. Yes. Quite uh, different from a Especially with the, the way the, sort of the, the bras were constructed and the, yes. the way a woman's bosom looked then. Yeah. And, yeah, and the um, 
just the fabrications were amazing and that you looked at some of the swimsuits and think, oh, how uncomfortable they must have been. Well, I the mean, the technology that was developed in terms of industry for the war led to fabrics like lycra being introduced, spandex mm. being produced, and lycra and spandex being woven together so that, that not only would the colours be permanent in terms of prints, but they could actually be comfortable to wear, mm. you know. Yeah. And there's amazing terminology too, like the play suit, which I can actually remember from yes. my childhood, you know, the play suit phenomenon. And it was an overall ensemble with a sort of shorts under top and a skirt you could wrap around and this whole um, collection of garments, which was all one garment. You could wear is, a play yeah. suit from nine o'clock in the morning yes. till nine o'clock at night and be comfortable at every moment, a cocktail party as well as breakfast with Gornies. Mm. Um, one of the things that struck me, you know, you talked about the war, was how much of that beautiful design and the furniture and the lamps and the everything was made possible really by uh, technology developed yeah, for yeah. wartime yeah. in a way that's a sort of a sad underpinning you know, uh, of the show. Well, it is, but it's, well, also, sad, it's, 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 word, it's but also a celebration. Underpinning if you look at, great say, Greta Grossman's grasshopper lamp, which is that mm. fantastic glare-free lamp, it is not only something that looks like it's an animal and space agey, but it's also supremely practical and easy to produce in mass production. Mm -hmm. By the way, the, the grasshopper lamp was so influential that one of our Auckland designers, John Crichton, was perhaps, well, you could say he copied, but you could say he was influenced by that and made his own grasshopper lamp and, here and in Auckland. Can you still buy such a thing? Um, the the Grossman one you can it's a limited uh, it's a um, it's still a, in limited production it's it's a designer item so you're not mm. going to buy it for fifty dollars yeah. mm. but if you buy it you'll have it for the rest of your life isn't that amazing that yeah. all these years later you can still like some buy of the jewelry. this thing like yes, some of the jewelry. jewelry was amazing. There's one particular brooch which to Margaret me Departa. smacked of sort of aviation and the jet age yeah. and space, and it was almost like it could be a, a logo for NASA or something. It's got that particular. Oh no, look I completely to it. agree. Margaret yes. Departa brought jewelry into into the area of art because she really was an artist who made miniature sculpture for mm. women to wear using often silver that's chased. Um, and polished so it's got different surfaces but it also has crystals and then pebbles from the beach that she's picked up just as we would say yeah. out on uh, an east coast beach. That's astonishing isn't it and so many ceramics too that reminded me of oh, the yeah. sort of um, ceramics that, have that came out of New Zealand more in the 70s really than yeah. way yeah. back in yeah, the 50s. Yeah Lynn Castle yes. for instance with his volcanic uh, atomic um, um, glazes would have e that work echoes uh, Gertrude and Otto Nautzler who were immigre couple a lot of the great designers in California were immigrants to to California they were a couple where she uh, Gertrude uh, Nautzler used to throw the bowls so they think that she threw about 25,000 wow. and he Otto designed all those fuming glazes it said that he designed over 2,000 glazes Gosh. their their ceramics are to America, what Lucy Ree ceramics are to London. Now, Ron, is this show on a tour of the Pacific, or is it a no, show no, that was particularly designed for us? No, no, it's only here in Auckland. Only here in Auckland. Right. It yeah. ca came from the Los Angeles County Museum, mm -hmm. and um, we're the sister city. Auckland's a sister city of Los Angeles. This right. is the first time that we've had a show from our sister city institution. And the curators from California and the conservators came over, and they loved the display that we'd done at Auckland Art Gallery because it's more domestic in scale than how it was displayed in Los Angeles. Okay. And because so many of the pieces in the show are domestic scaled, mm. it works in our gallery. So yeah. we were thrilled that they were thrilled. But even on really small scale, it works too. I visited the show with a guy who's a graphic designer, and yeah. he was just gobs, you know, looking oh, yeah. at all the pictures on the wall yeah. and the magazine covers and the topography and the beautiful advertising imagery that was produced out of California in those days, which of course is now reflected in Mad Men, the series totally. on TV that so many people love. Yeah. Well, the mm. best arts and architecture magazine in America came out of Southern California. It was called Arts and Architecture. You couldn't buy it in New Zealand, only three libraries subscribed to it, but <laughs> it was so influential, you know, it just, it basically proved you can make art out of a typewriter. Right. There are lots of great art to be seen at the Auckland Art Gallery. Thank you so much for coming, Ron Thanks Branson. for having me, Lindsay. Mm -hmm.